This is PBS. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, hi, uh, welcome to uh, This is Public Broadcasting. I'm Captain Rutledge. Uh, I'll be with you shortly. Uh, are you sure you can cook all of this for Thanksgiving dinner, Campbell? Hey, well, uh, it is Nathan, really. Uh, well, that may be, but uh, some of these dishes, uh, turkey croquettes, uh, hot garlic mash, uh, aracos, almondy, butternut squash pie. Uh, you're sure you can handle it all? Uh, well, uh, what makes you think I can? Eh? Well, for one thing, last night's supper was entirely too heavy on curry powder. Not true, but you do need a wee bit for an Indian cuisine. Yes, for Indian cuisine, not for spaghetti bolognese. Sure, but a wee bit of cultural fusion never hurt anyone. Campbell. It takes many years of hard practice for chefs to master the art of fusion cuisine. It's not just dumping a can of curry paste into spaghetti. Oh, well, what do you suggest, then? Well, uh, why not take a look at the cooks on public television? For years, public television has been a perfect medium to broadcast how-to programming for a wide audience, free from any commercial intervention or underwriting. To this day, the cooking shows on PBS have remained a popular mainstay of the service. In fact, I think that we should honor the best of these PBS chefs with a top ten list. So tie on your aprons and preheat your ovens, because these are the top ten best PBS chefs. Uh, I advise you to take notes on this, Campbell. Okay. Number 10. Vivian Howard, A Chef's Life. That's a big old head of cabbage. You think I'm weird? I like cutting more bread and Really? Why? Just because. Chef Vivian Howard studied at the New York Institute of Culinary Education and opened up her first restaurant with her husband, Ben Knight, in her hometown of Kinston, North Carolina. Her PBS series, A Chef's Life, takes a look behind the scenes of her restaurant, Chef and the Farmer, and tells the story behind the daily workings of a regular restaurant. Even though we don't get the full recipes behind her success, the dishes at Chef and the Farmer can inspire anyone to create delicious dishes and craft stories behind their favorite recipes. Number 9 Today we're talking Turkey 101 with the top 10 Thanksgiving Day mistakes and how to solve them. Sarah Moulton, Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Before coming to public television, Sarah Moulton worked behind the scenes for Good Morning America on ABC and produced a few programs for the Food Network. In 2008, Sarah's Weeknight Meals premiered on American public television. Where most cooking programs have labor-intensive and time-consuming recipes, Sarah's Weeknight Meals focuses on recipes that can be prepared quickly and easily, but still eye-catching and flavorful. With modern life so hectic, what more could you ask for? I'd be thankful. I'm Sarah Moulton. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you next time for more weeknight meals. Number eight. So here it is, folks. Beer can chicken, Cajun style at BBQU. Stephen Reichlin. Stephen Reichlin is a cordon bleu trained chef and author of several barbecue cookbooks, including The Barbecue Bible. In 2003, he started his own American public television program called Barbecue University, and has produced several other programs like it, including Primal Grill, Project Smoke, and Project Fire. Look at that, the way I like it. Mmm! The smoky crust, the garlicky peppers. This might be the best steak on Planet Barbecue. Franklin's expertise encompasses more than just American barbecue. There are also techniques from the Caribbean, Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the Pacific, and modes of cooking from the primitive to the modern. Perfect choice if you want to add some fire in your diet. Number seven. Marianne Esposito, Ciao Italia. They will look 
just like that. So there you have it, rotolo di pasta. Marianne Esposito's grandparents were talented chefs, but she preferred to work as a teacher instead. After traveling to Italy and taking a cooking class, Esposito turned to cooking and learning about her Italian heritage, eventually joining public television with her program, Ciao Italia, in 1989, and still hosting it to this day. The main focus of Ciao Italia is recipes that are doable, authentic, and good. Everything for the show is made from scratch, live and unscripted, and perfect for cooks trying to master Italian cooking in their own home kitchen. Number 6 Rick Bayless The waters of Mexico's Baja Peninsula are incredibly fertile with seafood that's not only prized by those that live nearby, but by connoisseurs all over the world. I'll be honest with you folks, I'm not the biggest fan of Latin American cuisine, but somehow Rick Bayless has a way to get folks interested in the culture and the cuisine of the country of Mexico. Rick Bayless is the owner of Frontera Grill in Chicago and has hosted two TV programs for PBS, Cooking Mexican in 1978 and Mexico One Plate at a Time in 2003. The latter show travels around Mexico, gathering authentic recipes that can be made at home with a few specialty ingredients. Eleven seasons on, Rick has made a great number of recipes perfect for anyone looking for flavor south of the border. So I'm just saying, give chorizo a chance. I mean, its flavor will turn practically anything into something that's, well, impossible to resist. Number five, Jacques Pepin. See that really creamy, you know, creamy and tender risotto here. Jacques Pepin learned to cook at his parents' restaurant, Le Pelican, and soon came to America to introduce classic French cooking to a wider audience. Starting in the 90s, Pepin has hosted a number of programs for American public television including Fast Food My Way, Essential Pepin, and Heart and Soul. Jacques' techniques are stemmed from cooking in both France and America, and focus on using fresh, seasonal ingredients to prepare stunning dishes, from minute recipes like in Fast Food My Way, or more stunning fare like in Heart and Soul. These programs are filled with a certain uh, je ne sais quoi to leave your mouth watering for more. So cook and relax. Happy cooking! going to do a multi-spiced flank steak taco with an avocado puree. Ming Tsai, simply Ming. Chef Ming Tsai is yet another cordon bleu trained chef with a passion for blending both Asian and American cooking techniques for great results. Ming started out on TV with the Food Network, but soon landed his own program with WGBH called Simply Ming. He's even made appearances on other WGBH programs, including Zoom and an episode of Arthur. I have to say, Muffy, that bite of quiche was a complete waste of taste buds and saliva. Ming, you awful brute! Muffy, your quiche Lorraine was delicious! It was vomitrocious! It was an absolute disgrace! Muffy should be forbidden from cooking ever again! But I didn't even my cook did! As I stated earlier, Ming Tsai's passion is blending both Eastern and Western cooking techniques to create amazing dishes pleasing to both the eye and the palate. To keep things fresh, he has also made challenges on the show for cooking on the fly and exploring new recipes with friends. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Jock, you're the best. And you guys are the best as well. As always, peace and good eating. Chin chin. Number three, Lydia Bastianich. That I know you're gonna make your own and you're gonna continue making it and your family's gonna love it. Originally born in the Italian-speaking regions of Slovenia, Lydia Maticchio Bastianich came to America with her parents and learned to cook at their bakery in New York. 
With her husband Felix, she opened the restaurant Guanovia in Queens, later changing the name to Validia. Lydia started working on public television with the series Lydia's Italian Table in 1998. Her production company, Tavola Productions, created several more programs, including Family Table, Lydia Celebrates America, and Lydia's Kitchen. All of Lydia's programs take a look at cuisine from every corner of Italy, along with some Italian-American favorites. The focus of her program is family-style cooking and spending time with loved ones in the kitchen. Yet another great program celebrating the cuisine of Italy. Let's go, come. Tutti a tavola mangiare. Salute. Number two. Hi, I'm Martha Stewart. Okay, okay, prison jokes aside, let's take this seriously. Martha Stewart became a household name through network television, but nowadays has a dedicated programming lineup made entirely for PBS. Starting with everyday food, her current PBS programs include Martha Stewart's Cooking School and Martha Bakes. Like with her past shows, Martha Stewart demonstrates that great looking food is easy to prepare and can look stunning with a little loving touch. Make sure you have these nice little cheesecloth wrapped lemons to squeeze over your clams. And how about some Chardonnay? Enjoy. Before we get to number one, here are a few honorable mentions. We're here to show you how you can have a better mac and cheese through science. Pack your bags, because Bridget and I are taking you on a trip to Thailand. We are. Coming up on Ellie's Real Good Food, I'll go even farther afield to help more people solve their everyday food challenge. How do you cook the perfect steak? Melt the butter into the cooking oil, and then we braise the steak with it while it finishes cooking. Welcome to downtown Dakar. This is the Tallinn Market. It is the most amazing place I've ever seen in my life. Hi, I'm Andreas Vista, host of New Scandinavian Cooking, the international cooking series that explores Scandinavian cuisine, culture, and history. And number one. I'm sure that most of you saw this coming, so let's say it together. Julia Child. Starting with the French chef at WGBH in 1963, Julia Child went on to produce several cooking programs on PBS, including Dinner at Julia's, Cooking with Master Chefs, Baking with Julia, and Julia and Jacques. Julia's cooking is based around using only the best ingredients and techniques with focus on flavor. Even though her first programs were produced on a shoestring budget, she still managed to create excellent dishes for her TV audience. And that's not all. She also slingshotted the careers of several chefs on this list. Martha Stewart, Jacques Pépin, Lydia Bastianich, Sarah Moulton, Rick Bayless, all of these cooks got their names out thanks to Julia. Her programs are still syndicated on public television stations today, and she shares a prominence alongside the likes of Bob Ross and Mr. Rogers as one of PBS's greatest. TV hosts. So I shall say, that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit! Well, that's all for now. Did I leave somebody out of the list? Feel free to comment below with who you think is the best PBS chef. In the meantime, uh, you better go up and check on Campbell. Ah, Campbell, so, did you get a lot out of the countdown? Oh, hey, sure. Oh, that's swell. So are you looking up a few of the chefs and the recipes from the countdown? Oh, nay, something better. Catering. Catering? Hey, hey, now, now look at this guy. One nice eating dinner for eight, freshly prepared and shipped to your door. Eighty-five dollars. Now that's a bargain I can get behind. Oh, well. Well, for you folks watching at home, don't forget to like and subscribe and to help the channel and also support your local PBS station to help create more shows like these that I've covered. For this is Public Broadcasting, I'm Captain Rutledge. Good day. Uh, say, Campbell, uh, do you think we could get some cornbread with it? Mm -hmm.